Howdy folks, and welcome back to Hilda. Today we're going to be watching Season 2, Episode 9, which is titled The Deer Fox, which is quite an intriguing title, simply because Twig is absolutely adorable. I'm obsessed with Twig. So if we get backstory on the boy or his species, or maybe a second Deer Fox shows up and we get a little... Uh, just a little Deer Fox adventure. It, it would be nice to have just kind of an episode that doesn't really have much in the way of dialogue as far as just like two Deer Fox going on an adventure, or even just Twig himself just going on an adventure kind of by himself. I'm assuming Hilda is still going to be grounded in this one, uh, keeping with the continuity of the last couple. I feel like that's something that's going to at least linger for at least this episode, maybe the next one as well. Uh, but we are coming up to the end of season two. Uh, after this, just four episodes to go. We're at about the 75% mark for season two. And it's kind of one of those things like the Frida stuff is all kind of building up and up and up kind of right around this point in the last season. So I'm curious to see if we start getting more and more uh, Eric Alberg stuff uh, happening as far as him ramping up his attempts to commit troll genocide or whatever his his plan is to kind of establish himself as a local hero so i don't know i'm intrigued uh somebody else did tell me that this is one of the best episodes of the season they said we get back-to-back -back bangers in episodes eight and nine here so i'm very very excited for this one so let's scooch over into place uh get ready to watch this uh, as i take this opportunity to thank you for watching this video uh if you haven't done so yet make sure you leave a like on the video make sure you subscribe to the channel so you see when more hilda stuff happens if you want to see this or any other Hilda video early and uncut, uh, there is a link to the Patreon in the description of this video if you want to support the channel a little extra. My tea for tonight is peppermint, and I really need some more decaf options. I feel like I pretty much just cycle between peppermint, sleepy time, and the, uh, the vanilla decaffeinated black tea that I, I drink as well. And... I don't know. I, I love all those teas, but I feel like they're starting to get a little bit old, so it's kind of like... I just need more options, man. So if you have any good decaf recommendations, hit me with those in the comments as well, as well as your general thoughts on this episode, uh, the reaction, anything you want to tell me. Fake spoilers for the end of season two? Just whatever. Uh, and with all that out the way, reasonably short intro list this time, let us get started with Hilda season two, episode nine, The Deer Fox, starting up in three, two, one, go. Back to the intro. I feel like we got cold open Definitely last time, but I feel like we've gotten a couple in recent memory. And I am going to be paying attention again here. Because I feel like we've seen most of this stuff. Just not the... Those three... Well, there's a very angry looking troll at one point there. But uh, uh, the three kind of mischievous looking guys that I pointed out a couple episodes ago. The Deer Fox. Great title card here. Uh, but yeah, I... Maybe today, but... Also, probably not, as far as finding out about those little guys. Maybe that'll be like the Black Hound of this season, where we just kind of build up to them, and they're kind of the big, big bad of the season that isn't Eric Albert. This is beautiful, though. Oh. Does Twig have psychic powers? I love her dragon panic lunchbox. See you later. Aww. Oh, are we gonna get? Twig, you know you can't go to school. Ugh. Oh. I can't think of a dog food brand name of like that kind of wet sloppy food. I wanted to say Alpo, but I'm not 100% sure if that's. Hey boy. Correct. How was your day? Boy. Oh. Boar. I was going to take him out, but I guess I lost track of uh -oh. time. Sorry, Twig. It's like I have to piss so bad. Frida and David are downstairs. I'm gonna go play with them for a bit, if that's okay. Oh, this just is gonna to be. And, you know, just don't get into any trouble. This is oh, gonna be a twig-centric oh, episode. Oh, All of these okay. shots are for, like from his point okay, of view. Like in that shot, yeah, we're like behind Twig, looking up at Joanna. We're looking up at Hilda. Oh, this is gonna be cool, if so. Oh, why are you wearing? Are those slippers that there David's he is. wearing? Oh. I still can't believe you let this guy steal your shoes, David. That's why he's wearing the slippers. <laughs> so far, at least this feels kind of tame. I mean, this is just a single regular looking ghost, right? We've dealt with a whole David. Not only that, not only that, he got his socks in the muck. 
Oh, now he got his whole body in the muck, too. Yo, take Hilda's boots. Those are a lot more fashionable. Back in the dream space. I know all will be revealed by the end of the episode, but I'm just, I'm trying to figure out, like, the symbolism. What I'm supposed to glean from any of this. Well, this obviously... Twig feels trapped in that apartment, right? Aww. Poor boy's got heart palpitations. Aww. Oh no, Hilda. Recently, I'm gonna pause real quick. Recently, my dog Jupiter has been really bad about uh, coming, like whimpering at our door and kind of nudging it with her snoot uh, around like two, three in the morning, something like that. Like typically we'll, we'll kick her out of our room around 10 and kind of settle down, put some on the TV, like doze off watching something pretty much. And like clockwork around 10, 10 15 something like that like if any of us get, like if i get up to brush my teeth i'll walk back into the bedroom and she jupiter just like gets up and like bolts off the bed she's like i know it's time for me to go to bed uh but then she inevitably for like the last week or so she's just been consistently uh nudging at the door and whimpering until one of us lets her in and then i wake up with a jupiter in my bed so i feel that with twig i said all that to say this i i i feel twig on this and uh you know, there's getting those Jupiter cuddles is pretty good, but uh, uh, you know, Twig just seems so, so cuddly. Jupiter's bigger. Jupiter's like seventy pounds, and she's big, and you know, Twig is just so little. I could just like hold him like this. I just want to hold him, sweet boy. Let's go, Twig. I'm glad I kind of emphasized so much solo twig adventure in the intro here because that's what we're getting. And like I said, the Hilda adventure, like the, the Hilda B plot kind of, so to speak, was, uh, like I said, just completely mundane compared to what we've been dealing with. Ooh, look at the animation on him just strutting across. Meanwhile, the Thunderbird comes back and says, hey, watch out for those cats. Also, this synth-heavy music feels almost Infinity Train-like. Dang, he's like way outside the wall. He's just a little guy. His legs are tiny. Troll. Twig. Oh, he's like gone, gone. Twig. He must be in the house somewhere. I wouldn't be so sure. Oh yeah, the window's open. Antler scratches made some hours ago, if I'm not mistaken. Damn, Alpha forensic expert. My favorite show is CSI. It's daytime. I don't know how much Twig understands of things like this. I know Twig was with Hilda in the very first episode when they had a troll encounter. Any luck? No. Uh huh. I have news. I've received word from the <laughs> That little flip. Hold on, hold on. I need, I need to go back and see that time. That little flip he did. It was only like two frames of animation on that flip, but it was so good. All right, hold on, hold on. I've received word from the <laughs> clan that I don't know why. It was so good. Seen the city. I have to go frame by frame while I'm editing and see how many frames that was. I'm sure I'm putting them up here somewhere. Every frame of his little roll. Wait, I rolled home. The cabin. Exactly what I was thinking. Mm. Things haven't really been the same for him since we moved here. Also, he's been neglected, Hilda. We can't risk breaking down with all those trolls out there. But tomorrow, I'll draw up a missing poster and send it out via courier pigeon right away. How's your drawing going to be compared to mine? I need to see it, Alpha. Uh, oh. Ooh, once again, the Infinity Train style reminds me of the, the Gome Chase music a little bit. Aw. Have I made the joke that this was their old stomping grounds? Get it? Stomping grounds. 
Yeah, that thing's definitely got a, a sense of smell. It definitely knows you're still in there. Aw. I miss Hilda, but she's been such a bitch to me the past couple days. Did Twig ever sign the paperwork? He's probably the scariest thing out here. I don't know if you can actually see the... Oh. Oh, blimey! These trolls are getting bolder all the time. <laughs> and during the day, he's a boulder. Hey, bada bing. That was terrible. <laughs> that was so bad. Aw. How does my drawing compare to hers? Never forget the place you grew up. Aw. Oh, is this when she found him? <laughs> this is an even littler Hilda. What's that? Hello? Aw, poor thing. He's always just been oh, so no. scared in the wilderness, huh? Hello? Aw. Look at him. His, his antlers hadn't even grown in yet. Look at these horns. They're like little twigs. Ah. There you are. You frightened me half to death. Oh, and a slightly younger Joanna, too. Home sweet home. Mm-hmm. Did Twig follow them? Ah, oh, that transition was kind of cool. how little was left. Oh, she's never seen those before, has she? You are the legal owner of this creature, correct? Ah. Oh, that that was Alfred's drawing. Okay, give me a tier list of drawings. Mine, Alfred's, and Hilda's. I'm really enjoying this episode, by the way. Like, it's just so different compared... Last episode was super different compared to your normal Hilda fair, while still having that supernatural kind of fantastical kind of adventure to it whereas this is just like you know completely in the wheelhouse of everything we've come to expect so far but just like the way it's presented the fact that it's focused on twig is so cool yeah, that's a very red wolf i can't tell if that's supposed to be the same one from last night i know color oh oh twig i forgot how tragic he looks when he's wet I can't tell. I know this show does... Oh, a little sassy boy. Look at him. Wait till low tide comes in. You know, it's not a good idea to wander into a forest if you don't know where you're going. But I do know. We're going to ask for help. Aw. Hello? Wait, is this the... Uh, the woodman? Obviously. <laughs> you know him, you love him. For a second, I thought they were going to that cabin that trapped them inside last time. I don't know why. But you must have a book about deer foxes or something that might help. Nope. There aren't really any books about deer foxes because no one really knows anything about deer foxes. Interesting. A lot of people aren't sure they even exist. They'll probably be getting along. <laughs> Joanna's like, I hate the That's woodman so much. Sometimes it's better to retrace old steps than it is to forge new paths. Did you know the eagles are back in the valley? Hmm. Take care of yourself. <laughs> also, go fuck yourself. We're not giving up, Hilda. We keep looking, however long it takes. Do you remember what happened here? Even if it's nighttime. Ooh, eagles. Ooh, we get getting more backstory? Ooh. Come. Aurora, Aurora Borealis. Borealis. Do you see that? I still don't know the full context of the steamed hams Hilda! thing. It's one of those jokes that I, I just don't understand. Stay there. I'm coming for you. And at this I'll point, I'm too afraid to ask. Don't move. All I know is something about Aurora Borealis. Yes. At least I have you to keep me company. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, though. Perceives Hilda as a threat. Yo, it might pick Hilda up. Oh, Twig! Let's go! You saved me, boy. Follow him. He's showing you a safe way out. No, now this music almost sounds a little. The little beat in the background sounds a little like Zelda Breath of the Wild a little bit. Look, Hilda, for goodness' sake, <laughs> be careful. You Remember? did forget what happened here. I remember. I was looking at something when I fell. 
It was that. Steamed hands. Yes. This got steep fast. Not worn out, are you? Come Dang. On. Race you to the top. Get it, Joanna. Mom? Keep climbing, Hilda. Just don't look to your right. Is it the wolf? Yup. 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 Just watch your footing. Oh, does she have a bad memory of this guy, too? Yikes. Well, th this intensified real quick. Oh. Yo, it's afraid of a ghost taking her boots. I gotta worry about this guy. Yo, Twig. Oh my god, I'm so scared, though. Don't hurt my boy. I'm, like, sinking back in my chair a little bit out of anxiety. I'm here for you, boy. Wily Coyote. We don't get to see the little of dirt when it lands. You two are quite a team. It just comes right back up from the ridge. Of course, he missed you so much. What made you come here? Aurora Boreas. Are there going to be more deer foxes? Oh, that's a big one. Is it going to be like a whole society of them that only appears when the, the lights are shining or something like that? Yep. They're so majestic looking. Have you ever seen anything like this? I don't think anyone has. I'm going to write a book about it. Was this where you were born? That's Deer Fox 4. Yo, there's a red wolf coming. I fought something that looked kind of like that in Elden Ring the other day. Oh, okay. So that is something. Ooh. Little celestial path. I think they're leaving. Twig gets to make a choice. Oh. Another flashback. That little hop. Oh, it was during the Eagles' time. Twig abandoned his family to save Hilda from the Eagles. Oh, that is cool. I guess that's how he got there so quickly, huh? Wow. That's incredible. Where did you come from? Are you all alone, you poor little thing? He is now. Hmm, wow. Now comes time to make the other choice, though. It's okay, Twig. Without anyone under duress. If this is what you want, then you should go. Ah, this could go either way, though. But I'm a sweet boy. Do you think you can come back and visit one day? S say psych. I don't. Say psych. I still don't know if we're going to get debated or not. Oh, he's going. It's so beautiful, but it's so sad at the same time. <laughs> Shit, dog. That hit me a little bit. With the remembrances of those we hold dear. No pun intended. We'll always have our memories of this place. But that's all it is. Memories. Our house is gone. The mountain's gone. Our life here is gone. Twig's and now... gone. No, Twig's gone too. I'm sorry I've been so quiet at the end of this. <laughs> it's just... How... Twig, stop it. I'm not in the mood. How do you get back? Tw Twig? He just dip. <laughs> Two middle fingers up, just walked out of there. Looks like somebody changed his mind after all. So we did get jebated. Did you? Damn it, after did I teared up say? and almost cried. Gosh dang it. I thought I'd lost you. <laughs> Things are going to be different from now on. I promise. Oh. Oh, we're picking up with this again. Oh, right, and they're going to get the shoes back because they brought Twig this time. 
Ah. Remember us? Not so fast. You'll never get these shoes. Just slap. Yep. <laughs> Yo, on the antlers too. Oh, David, are you going to put them on? I got new ones. What? My parents wouldn't let me just not have any shoes. And why did we even need to get them back? Now I've got two pairs. All right, you've got your hands. Oh, one more There's flashback. Your sandwiches and juice in your bag. Are you sure you're going to be okay out there without me? I'm sure. I have Twig. Don't go further north than the stone circle. Don't crawl into any strange holes. And the most important thing? Stay with Twig the whole time. I thought she was going to say, stay away from the woodman. She's always hated him. Off you go. Have fun. Aw, oh, their bond is so, like... Man's forsook his entire family just to, like, come back and Our live with Hilda. Twig. In their shitty Let's little apartment. Me. Where should we go? Literally, the world is your oyster. Just, you know, not further north in the, the stone circle, right? Nice. That was a really good one, man. I felt things. I felt things more than I felt in this entire series. I know I said back in Season 1, Episode 2 that I was on the verge of tears, about to cry. Just that the, the, the giant's love story was so sweet and everything. But since then, I haven't felt the emotions as strongly as then, except for this episode. Uh, one point I, I think I started to say, but didn't completely get across. Uh, in the intro, I didn't realize, you know, Hilda jumps down, she slides down that light path in order to run through all of the scenes from the season. I didn't realize that the light path itself was going to be something that was going to be important to one of the episodes. But here it was. I wasn't even thinking about that. Uh, so now, officially, the only thing that I, I have seen in there that uh, might still need to come into play is those those three mischievous looking guys. Also, Tildy? It's, it's still her looking all mysterious and, and shady or something. So I don't know if we're going to get another, like, Tildy adventure. Uh, someone casts a spell on her to turn her like middle-aged young again because we saw we've seen really old Tildy and we've seen really young Tildy but we've never really experienced like the middle-aged uh, mysterious powerful witch Tildy uh, but we see her in the intro so I'm wondering if we're gonna get uh, something of that at some point by the end of the season as well uh, I I felt vibes of uh, classically, famously, uh, one. Uh, I feel like every 90s kid, the first thing that they ever watched that ever just made them bust into tears was the episode Bye Bye Butterfree from Pokemon, where you know Ash essentially releases one of his first Pokemon. The, the Butterfree are, are like migrating and stuff, and he his Butterfree wants to go with them, meets like a, a, a girl Butterfree that he kind of falls for and he, he lets the Butterfree go to be with its own kind. And it's it's like the saddest, most emotional like thing. And it's like, like the first time like a kid is like, I didn't realize watching something could make me cry, but there it is. I got vibes of that with Twig going to be with his own family. I still don't know exactly how he dipped, uh, but there was, there was really no real indication that he was gonna, I feel like. Aside from, you know, seeing that little vision of Hilda, I still don't know what those little light orbs are. I don't know if they're like remembrances of experiences you've had or if they're just kind of like what you're feeling or what you're wanting or what. Uh, but either way, Twig basically two middle fingers up to his own kind and said, I live with Hilda in this, this, this tiny, tiny little apartment. And uh, I do like that they kind of came back to that initial plot point of the ghost in the shoes. And now it was because Twig was with them that they were able to get them back. Uh, even if we did get double debated by by David. You know, I noticed that he was standing in bushes because I was going to make a joke about his, his little slippers. But he was, if you notice, he was standing like behind a bush or something to where you couldn't see his feet. So the fact that when he steps out there and he's got his shoes on, you think they would have noticed if they all walked there with him. They would have noticed, right, that he was wearing actual shoes. He's like, I'm just going to follow you about 50 feet behind for no reason whatsoever. Just, I'll meet you there. Um, yeah, now he's got two pairs of shoes. What can you do? Uh, that, that, was, that was a tremendous episode. I loved, in addition to just, like, the, the solo twig adventure that we got, I loved seeing all the flashbacks when Hilda was really, really little and kind of seeing her bonding with Twig, how they kind of found him and met him and, and you know, established their bond together. Uh, that was really cool to see. And it's, it's interesting how everything, you know, they say history repeats itself. 
uh, we essentially got a lot of the same scenarios, right? Uh, between the past and the present. Very similar stuff, uh, you know, like the Woodman said, retracing old steps and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this was just this was just a phenomenal episode. Uh, whoever said back to back bangers was was pretty much right. I like this one more than the last one, even though the last one was very good, very different. This this was ex I, I said I, I, I kept using the word exceptional last time that the last episode was was exceptionally good in just just about every aspect. And I think this one tops that one just about in every aspect emotionally certainly the music was great yes i love all the jazz in the jazz club but like all the stingers and stuff that we got in this episode were phenomenal the visuals were great with the uh the light show and the the adult deer foxes the emotions were there just everything was like on 10 for this episode this was an incredible episode of hilda uh and hey even if this ends up being the high point of the season we will take it because this episode was so fantastic uh, wow, I, I, I just, I don't even know what else to say without just kind of repeating myself saying how good it was over and over again. So I feel like I want to sit here and bask in this a little more, but I think I need to, I think I need to call it here because I, I, I don't think I can articulate much of much else about what, I mean, we just watched it. I mean, you watched snippets of it if you're watching on YouTube. If you're watching on Patreon, you watch the whole episode, but you at least got enough of the episode to see, like you know, to bask in it and everything. You watched what I just watched, basically, is what I'm trying to say. You saw how great this was. You don't need me to just kind of blab on and on about it. So I, like I said, I'm going to quit. Uh, hey, hey, leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought of this one, what you thought about it when you first watched it, uh, the emotions you felt. Did you ugly cry at the end when Twig was leaving? Did you also think of Bye Bye Butterfree? Uh, let me know all those things and more in the comments. And uh, wow, just, wow, what an episode. This phenomenal stuff here in this one. I <sighs> Hilda's been really good recently. I really hope that they like stick the landing for season two. I'm pretty sure the ending of season two will feed directly into the Mountain King movie. I don't know whether to consider season two finale to be like a hard ending to the season or just kind of like set up for the movie and the movie to kind of be like the finale of the season as it were, right? I I don't know. Or we could wrap up here and the movie could just be its own standalone thing. I don't know. We'll see when we get there. It's still a couple weeks away, but it is coming. Uh, so until then, we got a couple other episodes to watch. So until next time, I'll catch you with some more Hilda. Take it easy, everybody. <laughs>